period, I recognize the Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, this tired and out-of-touch government is failing to deliver on the number one issue for people in Saskatchewan. That's the rising cost of living. Now, yesterday, the Premier found time to zoom into a House of Commons committee to call out the feds. Fair enough, Mr. Speaker. But he hasn't lifted a finger to provide relief for Saskatchewan people here at home. Let's call it for what it is, hypocrisy. Why isn't the Premier doing anything to help people here at home, and why hasn't he cut the gas tax to give families a break they so desperately need? Recognize the Premier. take uh, that, those dollars that are collected on a litre of fuel and we put it directly into the highways budget, Mr. Speaker. Unlike the members opposite when they had uh, the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, I uh, didn't put all of those dollars into the highways budget. They put some of it into the general revenue fund, Mr. Speaker. Uh, let me maybe be a little more specific. When we removed 112,000 people from the tax rolls, Mr. Speaker, in this province, the provincial tax rolls altogether, how we did that was we raised the we raised the limit on where you started paying provincial tax. Under the NDP, a Saskatchewan resident would start paying provincial tax at 26000 and change, Mr. Speaker. Today, that same resident starts paying provincial income tax at $59,000 oh, of income, Mr. Speaker. Over $20,000 more income is, is, uh, is uh, being allowed to be made before there's any provincial tax at all, Mr. Speaker. Uh, with respect to uh, the taxes that we have on gasoline and home heating fuel, Mr. Speaker, whether it be natural gas or electricity, there's no PST on, on any of those charges, Mr. Speaker. Unlike provinces that are harmonized, like Ontario, that has removed a few cents off of their gas tax, but has an 8% PST that's charged on the gas as well, Mr. Speaker. And so over $2 billion in affordability measures each and every budget, Mr. Speaker, and through the strength of the Saskatchewan economy, we're able, to, we're able to continue with those through this budget, Mr. Speaker, through the next year, making Saskatchewan cities and communities some of the most affordable, if not the most affordable, in the nation in Canada. Recognize the leader of the opposition. Again, Mr. Speaker, we see a Premier more interested in pointing fingers or picking fights than he is in actually doing his job. Mr. Speaker, taking care of the basics getting results for Saskatchewan people. Right. We see that with a total lack of any cost of living relief, and we see that in this tired and out-of-touch government's mismanagement on the housing file. Mr. Speaker, we're joined here today by Shannon Kay and her son River. They live in, Sask housing, in a Sask housing unit in Saskatoon. Mr. Speaker, a unit that is riddled with mold and has sewage in the basement, and it's making River sick. Does the Premier think that it's acceptable for people, for children in this province to be made sick as a result of this government's mismanagement on this file? Recognize the Premier. I would uh, just first of all welcome Shannon and River uh, to their Legislative Assembly and I would say uh, this Mr. Speaker that the, the Minister of Sask Housing would be more than happy to sit down with Shannon and River Mr. Speaker and ensure that their, the, housings, the uh, housing availability that we have uh, is available uh, for, for her and uh, her young son. Here, here. Recognize the Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, it's available. It's just being mismanaged and it's making this little boy sick. But this is a government that's more focused on picking fights and taking flights, and they've simply lost sight of the basics. The things that matter most to people, their kids, Mr. Speaker, nothing matters more than that, than that. Now, let me read from a doctor's note for Little River, and I quote, this little six-year-old boy was exposed to mold in their apartment and developed an allergic reaction, causing allergic conjunctivitis. His hands and arms are covered in a painful rash." And the quote. Again, Mr. Speaker, does the Premier think that it's in any way acceptable to mismanage our public house housing so badly that it's making children in this province sick? the Premier. And as I said, the Minister of Sask Housing uh, will be pleased to, to meet with Shannon after, Mr. Speaker, and to make uh, arrangements if that's the case, Mr. Speaker, not acceptable. Recognize the Leader of the Opposition. It's not acceptable that they have to come to the Legislature to get the attention of this government, Mr. Speaker. It's his job. It's his job to make sure that people can access basic services in a safe and timely way, that there's an ambulance when they need one 
that their kids can get the supports that they need in our classrooms, or that public housing units will provide safe and affordable homes for family. This is a Premier who continues to take his eye off the ball on what matters most to Saskatchewan families, and it's Saskatchewan people, children, who pay the price time and time again. Will the Premier cool it with the trips and the fights and the flights, get back to basic and start making Saskatchewan people, making sure that Saskatchewan people get the basic services that they expect from their government? Yeah. Recognize the Premier. Opposition would well understand uh, that in case of Saskatoon, there's a local housing authority uh, that would be running the Sask housing uh, stock that we have in that community, Mr. Speaker. And so, uh, ministers, pleased to meet with Shannon and River, uh, Mr. Speaker, about their uh, specific situation. He would then have to reach out to the local housing authority in Saskatoon. There's many across the province uh, to ensure. What? Mr. Speaker, what? Mr. Speaker, um, so that that's the process uh, that is there, uh, Mr. Speaker. But again, I, I say we welcome uh, Shannon and River to her Legislative Assembly, and, and the minister will uh, most certainly meet with them on the broader uh, investments uh, that were made. And Mr. Speaker, have been debated over the course of this past week, and I suspect will be voted on uh, and passed quite likely uh, today, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, when it comes to investing in our classrooms, uh, we've seen operate. We've seen operational investment in this year's budget, Mr. Speaker, which will be passed today, and we'll be watching if the members opposite uh, vote for it. Uh, at record levels, Mr. Speaker, up 9%, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, record levels of classroom uh, classroom supports funding being provided in that, Mr. Speaker, record levels of funding going into our health care system in the province, over 10% lift uh, to our health care system, Mr. Speaker, to and the SHA will be providing the services that Saskatchewan people affect because of that funding, Mr. Speaker. And last but certainly not not least is a 14% increase in the municipal, municipal revenue sharing funding that goes directly into our communities across this province, Mr. Speaker. Classrooms, care and community, Mr. Speaker, all receiving record levels of funding only possible due to the strength of the Saskatchewan economy. Mr. Speaker, I've seen River and Shannon's home firsthand. Uh, I saw River's health issues. I saw the doctor's notes. I immediately brought this to the minister's attention. That was two weeks ago. I sent him a letter detailing the horrors of this that this family has had to endure, black mold in their home, shoddy repairs that don't fix the underlying problems, sewer backups that destroy property, and leave their homes stinking of urine and feces. So while it's nice to hear the Premier's words today, I didn't even get a response from the minister, Mr. Speaker. This is no way for anyone in this province to live. How did the minister allow this home to become so unsafe, and what is he going to do for this family here today? Here, here. Recognize the Minister of Social Services. Mr. Speaker, in, uh, in terms of SASC housing units in general, Mr. Speaker, we have 17,000, north of 17,000 uh, here in our province, and uh, many of them are uh, quite old. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there's a lot of money that is put into uh, upkeep, uh, upkeep and repair. Uh, it's an important part of affordability here in our province. Many of those units are uh, rent geared to income. In terms of this uh, specific case, absolutely, as the Premier mentioned, would be happy to uh, learn a little more about this situation, uh, Mr. Speaker, and see if we can help this family. Uh, in this year's budget, there is an increase for uh, upkeep and remediation and turning over units as much as we possibly can. That work is uh, constantly continuing, uh, Mr. Speaker, but in this particular case, uh, we'll work to rectify the situation. Recognize the member from the John Alton Soul Centre. Mr. Speaker, Shannon is a single mother of seven. She's been banging down every door. She eventually came to me. I immediately went to her home in Saskatchewan. I wrote to the minister two weeks ago, and I haven't received a response, and she hasn't gotten any action. She shouldn't have to come to Saskatoon, from Saskatoon to her legislature, just to have her voice heard. Their case is one of thousands where SASC housing units aren't kept in good repair and aren't able to provide safe and affordable housing to people in need. Shannon's neighbours, I, I, I heard from many of them, report cockroaches, bedbugs, in addition to black mould and frequent sewage backups. When will the minister ensure that his, this family has a safe place to live, one that's free from mould, sewage and pests? Yeah. Recognize the Minister of Social Services. 
Uh, Mr. Speaker, as I said in my previous answer, uh, not uh, aware of the specific case. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I've heard of uh, uh, situations with uh, Sturby Place uh, last year, as I believe is what the member referenced uh, in, in this case, and uh, Sask housing officials uh, did, uh, did inspect the place at that time, as I recall, going off memory here, of course. But uh, again, uh, Mr. Speaker, we want to have safe and affordable places to be able to have uh, families here in Saskatchewan uh, put a roof over their head, which is uh, obviously very important uh, for, for this family and many, many across uh, our province who, who, who do find, in fact, adequate and affordable housing uh, with Sask uh, Saskatchewan Housing Corporation. So in this specific case, uh, obviously, we'll look uh, into this closely and try and find a solution as quick as we can. Thank you. Recognize a member from the John Alpenstone Centre. Mr. Speaker, the minister's mistaken. There was another case around Sturby Place, another single mother with a rat infestation uh, that came here about a year ago. But this is a different case. I wrote to the minister two weeks ago. Shannon has independently followed up. We've received no response. We've seen no action. This tired and out and this tired and out of touch government isn't focused on the basics. In Saskatchewan, people deserve so much better. Shannon shouldn't have to fight so hard just to have a safe place to live for herself and her children. No one in this province should have to live in a house plagued with black mold, sewage, pests, rodents. Their unit in Saskatoon isn't the only one that's fallen into disrepair. There are thousands of vacant units across the province that should be providing safe and affordable homes but aren't because this government has cut the maintenance budget by 41 per cent while construction costs soar. When will we see a real plan from this government to fix up our housing stock and provide safe housing for families instead of performative announcements at election time that are too little, too late? Recognize the Minister of Social Services. Mr. Speaker, in terms of a 41 per cent cut uh, to maintenance and uh, repair, uh, I don't know what the member is talking about. She'll have to inform me about that, Mr. Speaker. Uh, that has been consistent across uh, the, the last many years, and including this year, uh, an increase of $9.6 million, Mr. Speaker. So we're working very hard to turn over as many units uh, as we can. I know there's challenges with uh, tradespeople and uh, that, that work uh, in, in certain areas of the province. But we'll, uh, we'll continue with, the, with our investments and working with local housing authorities to ensure there's a safe, affordable places for people to uh, stay uh, in, in Saskatchewan. And so this is uh, work that is constantly underway, Mr. Speaker. Certainly more work to do, and uh, we're, gonna, we're uh, prepared to do it. Recognize a member from the John Alveston Centre. Mr. Speaker, we're talking about the very basics here a safe place to live free from mold, free from raw sewage in the basement, not once, but three times, free from cockroaches, bed bugs, a safe place for one's kids. These are the basics. Saskatchewan is a wealthy province. It shouldn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be this way, Mr. Speaker. This tired and out-of-touch government isn't focused on taking care of the basics for people. They're more focused on picking fights and blaming others. It's time for them to get back to the basics, Mr. Speaker. When will the minister do his job, respond to basic requests, and make sure that SASC units are providing safe and affordable housing for the people of Saskatchewan? Recognize Minister of Social Services. Mr. Speaker, in, Mr. Speaker, in terms of vacant units, uh, sometimes there, there is turnover when people move out there, and it's very basic, and it's uh, just a cleaning of uh, situation, but several times there's extensive damage, unfortunately, and that, that does occur, and that's into the tens of thousands of dollars, uh, and then there's uh, the time it takes to find tradespeople to do some of that, that work uh, to, uh, to be able to turn those uh, units over. And so, that, uh, that, that's a challenge, as I mentioned, with, with tradespeople to be able to uh, perform that work. And, uh, but that's constantly happening all the time. We work uh, as quickly as we can. The, the uh, SASC Housing uh, Corporation with the local authorities work as hard as they can to turn over units uh, as quickly as possible when, when there is a, a changeover, Mr. Speaker. And if there is some, somebody in a situation uh, that the member brought up, we will look to find uh, alternate locations uh, that, that uh, will serve uh, that, that situation as well. So again, we're constantly working on this, Mr. Speaker. Recognize a member from the Journal Wall Shakers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Earlier this week, we were joined by Shannon Oral Bast, 
a cancer survivor and healthcare worker who came to her legislature to sound the alarm about the culture of fear and burnout created by this tired and out of touch government. And one of the things that bothered her the most that day was the total lack of any willingness from the Sask party to listen. The Minister of Health even came after me and tried to say that listening to healthcare workers was some kind of bad idea. Why won't the Sask party listen? Why do they continue to ignore healthcare workers and refuse to act on the solutions that come from the front lines? Good here. Recognize the Minister of Health. Here. Thank you, um, Mr. Speaker. Just to be clear, uh, what I indicated was that it is important to listen, and that is what we as government do, but it's also important when you listen to frontline health care providers, to doctors, to nurses, to other health care workers, that you act on, on the things that you're being told, uh, which we are doing, Mr. Speaker. An example of that is some of the work that's being done here in Regina, but also in Saskatoon with the capacity pressure action plans uh, to address some of the issues at St. Paul's Hospital, for example, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as an example, I have had uh, several uh, meetings uh, with nurses at St. Paul's Hospital, including uh, also being there in a couple of occasions, uh, Mr. Speaker, and as a result of that, we've had some very good conversations between us, the frontline health care providers, senior leadership at the SHA, and uh, nurses at uh, St. Paul's, and this is just one example, Mr. Speaker, have been providing uh, ideas and solutions, and the SHA is working uh, with the nurses and doctors to be able to act on those and implement those. We'll continue to listen to frontline health care providers and implement the, uh, the solutions that they bring forward to us, Mr. Speaker. Recognize the member from the general safety. Mr. Speaker, we have a plan for health care, and it's one that we've built by listening to health care workers. They want to hear it, then they should listen up right now. We're going to strike that nursing task force that nurses have been calling for for over a year. We're going to bring back local voices by restoring the community health advisory networks. We're going to build a grow your own strategy so that we can train Saskatchewan people and we're going to reform the ambulance system to make sure that people can get an ambulance when there's an emergency. And yes, most importantly, Mr. Speaker, we're going to listen to health care workers and end the culture of fear and burnout that this tired and out-of-touch government has created. Where is the SAS Party's plan to start listening to frontline workers and fix our broken health care system? Recognize the Minister of Health. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. The member opposite forgot to leave out the rest of the plan, which was in addition to the uh, 52 rural hospitals that were closed during their time in government, but the additional uh, 50 uh, hospitals, as are recommended by the FIKE report that the member for Regina Rosemont said when he was the uh, temporary leader of the opposition, that he would have got around to doing that, Mr. Speaker, and it's important yeah. to get that on the record. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, the, the health care plan from the provincial government is very clear. It has been in the Health Human Resources Action Plan that was released in September of 2022, Mr. Speaker. It was in a document uh, released not that long ago called Provincial Budget, Mr. Speaker, where the, uh, the government is investing uh, record amounts, $7.6 billion into the health care system, a 10.6% increase in health care over the previous year, an $85 million amount of funding, a $29 million increase for our health, uh, health Human Resources Action Plan, more training seats, more residency seats in this province, Mr. Speaker, so we're training more health care providers, more capital, Mr. Speaker, more projects. The list goes on and on, and I'll detail it in future answers, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is what Shannon Oral Best had to say to the Regina Leader Post. Quote, for me, as a breast cancer patient, listening is important. Health care employees are not okay. They're not well, especially after COVID. We need to look after our people, end quote. When will the minister get it? When will he start listening to our health care workers so Saskatchewan people can get the care that they need? Recognize the Minister of Health. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I, I am honoured to serve as the Minister of Health, and I take that role very seriously, which is why I uh, engage with as many frontline health care providers, patients, people right across this province, whenever I have the opportunity to do so. I have uh, taken the opportunity to visit uh, uh, over 40 communities across this province, meeting uh, with health care providers. Uh, Mr. Speaker, just uh, since uh, you know, having the opportunity to serve as Minister of Health uh, since late August, I think I've had over 100 meetings, Mr. Speaker. Just looking at the list right here, uh, uh, nurses, doctors, nurse practitioners, 
um, pediatrics, uh, dental surgeons, Mr. Speaker, uh, researchers from the university, uh, foundations, Mr. Speaker. Um, that is important work, and I would say this. Earlier this week, we had a couple of advocates from uh, endometriosis, uh, Saskatchewan here, and they uh, wrote back to me and said, Mr. Speaker, that they were grateful. They said, I thank you for an efficient and productive meeting on Tuesday and for your attention in taking these steps towards examining and approving surgical, uh, medical and clinical management of endometriosis. Uh, we're encouraged to see your interest in researching possibilities and continuing the conversation with us and your expressed dedication. To Recognize a member from Saskatchewan Rivers. Mr. Speaker, the latest numbers from the government on the Lake Diefenbaker Irrigation Project are shocking. They are spending $1.1 billion on just the first phase. All said and done, it's projected to cost $44,000 per acre. Mr. Speaker, these numbers are based on the original estimate. Given this government's track record of mismanagement projects, there's no telling how high the costs can get. This government seems to think $13 million per new hospital bed is a good deal. And that's what they're paying in Prince Albert. Mr. Speaker, how can this government explain such gross neglect and mismanagement of taxpayer money? Recognize Minister of Trade and Export Development. Well, uh Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Speaker. With regard to the uh, Lake Diefenbaker uh, irrigation project, we uh, were pleased to announce at SARM that we are moving forward with constructing the first 90,000 acres uh, of that important project, Mr. Speaker. $1.15 billion uh, investment into phase one. And obviously, Mr. Speaker, something that we are focused on is value-added agriculture. Here, 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 and yeah. that is something here, here. that we see working with producers, uh, working with partners in industry as building our economy of the future, Mr. Speaker, which is working. Uh, we're seeing nearly, tw I think, over $20 billion of ag exports this year. We want to see those numbers increase, and a big part of that is going to be value-added agriculture. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. Here, here. a member from Saskatchewan Rivers. Mr. Speaker, last week the Minister of Crown Investments referred to their SMR nuclear project. This is a new, untested technology that could bring massive financial liabilities to the province. By allocating hundreds of millions of dollars to the fund, the government is gambling with public money on an unproven nuclear venture. The true costs of this project are unknown, yet this government has committed to shutting down all our reliable coal-fired plants by 2042. Promoting wind, solar and unproven SMNR technology is an irresponsible energy policy that could cost Saskatchewan residents for generations. Mr. Speaker, will this government commit, commit today to reinvesting in clean, affordable coal instead of their destructive net zero by 2050 agenda? Recognize the Minister of Crown Investments Corporation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm, uh, I have to say I'm a little bit surprised to hear this question from the member opposite, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised. The member, uh, her own party held a meeting in Weyburn at, of all places, the Tommy Douglas, Douglas Centre. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, so shouldn't be really surprised what comes from that member. Mr. Speaker, we are going to make investments into um, all of the above approach, Mr. Speaker, when it comes to uh, Mr. S I can guarantee you he wasn't. Uh, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> with an all of the above approach, Mr. Speaker, when it comes to uh, Mr. Speaker, power generation, including nuclear energy, Mr. Speaker, which would be good for this province, including for the north, where that member, uh, Mr. Speaker, resides, right. Mr. Speaker, uh, we're going to invest in natural gas, Mr. Speaker. We're going to continue to run our coal fleet, Mr. Speaker, uh, and we are going to continue to uh, investigate the possibility of deploying uh, technology, including small modular reactors, Mr. Speaker, which I think the people of this province are supportive of. Yeah, yeah. Recognize a member from Saskatchewan Rivers. Mr. Speaker, in case that government and those ministers need a, remind, a reminder, let me read to them the following statement on SaskPower website. Quote, in 2020, the federal government set a target of net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. They're committed to reaching the target. End quote. Mr. Speaker, they go on to state that their goal is to decarbonize our energy grid. 
They state, to reach net zero, we must transform our entire power system. Furthermore, they state their plan is to replace half of our energy grid with 3,000 megawatts of wind power by 2035. Mr. Speaker, can this government explain why they are pursuing the destruction of our energy sector for failed options like wind and solar? Recognize the Minister of Crown Investments Corporation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would uh, first of all say that um, net zero doesn't mean zero emissions, Mr. Speaker. We're going to have a uh, complement, a mix of uh, energy generation, uh, electrical generation that will include a variety of different methods, including natural gas, which we're opening up a 377 megawatt uh, natural gas fired uh, generation station outside of Moose Jaw later this summer. Uh, we're also uh, looking to proceed on a, the next 377 megawatts uh, near the Lanigan area, Mr. Speaker, and we are uh, beginning a pre-consultation on what will be the next uh, form of generation, both on natural gas as well as nuclear power, which have no emissions, Mr. Speaker, um, but which could provide for a path forward for this province to be able to ensure that we have electrical generation that can support the people of this province and industry, including in the wintertime, Mr. Speaker, so we don't get into a situation that was left by Alberta, by the NDP in Alberta, Mr. Speaker, where we had to provide power to that province in the dead of winter.